Hey folks, Gary here with Paramount. So I'm making a real quick impromptu video just because I came across this uh, really accidentally. So I'm actually in the middle of doing the review of the Zero Compromise ZC527 and I was using their block mounts, which is a really nice mount by the way, to mount this up so that we can continue to do the review on this and do a bunch of other testing and all kinds of other stuff. Well, this block mount comes with something you're probably familiar with, these little wedges, and the spur mounts come with them, um, and they actually sell them on their own through different companies, you know, anyway. So basically the idea behind these wedges is that we have a cutout that has a certain angle, and of course this wedge has a certain angle, and then we can use this wedge between those two angles, it equals a 90. And we can use this wedge essentially to get up underneath there and level the optic off the turret housing bottom, which has a flat 90 degree surface right here on the bottom. Makes perfect sense. The problem is, is I've tried these in the past, whether mounting it with a, on a spur or by themselves, I've tried it multiple times and I've never have come out with good results. I didn't spend a lot of time figuring out why. All I know is that I tested it. It was not level as level as I could get it using other methods. Uh, and didn't spend a lot of time with that. Didn't really care. You know, I was like, well, maybe this angle is not cut correctly. All I know is that it's not getting the results that I wanted, so I quit using those. And I've told people, hey, you know what? They haven't worked for me. That's what I've said. <sighs> well, I'm mounting this up, and I knew that I would be trying out their little system, and I wanted to figure out if it was gonna work. And the way I was gonna test that was end up putting a level on top of this turret housing. Now, I will tell you right now, every time that I mount an optic, using a level on top of a turret housing, I wanna make sure that the turret housing bottom and the top of the turret cap, that's what I'm mounting off, whatever I'm mounting off, whether I remove this or I'm using the cap itself, I wanna make sure that these two surfaces, this surface and this surface are parallel and it's easy to do. So right here I have a machine piece of steel, I know it's flat, I get it to a spot that is level, and this table is not perfectly level, but that's actually a pretty level spot right there. So I put that right there and I will tell you right now, when I had this on zero, well, it doesn't matter, that's not quite zero, but it's close enough. All right, I don't know if you can see this or how clearly you can see it, but that's not level. Well, I know that if a turret cap isn't level, it rotates and I can actually find it a spot to where it is level. So, you know, again, you can sit there and rotate it a little bit at a time and get to a point to where it is level. I found that uh, 11.43 was perfectly level on this. So there we go. Now I've confirmed that the turret housing bottom and that scope cap is parallel. All right, so we have two flat surfaces that are parallel and should, whatever this is reading, that should read as well. Now, what I'm using right here is a short action customs final scope level. It's a pretty cool device. I use it for a multitude of things and we're gonna be using this for the testing and, and being able to compare two scopes side by side on a tripod. So the first thing I wanna do, and, and now I do have the LRA send it level up there as a, just kind of a visual for you. And if you haven't seen my review on that, you need to go check that out. These things are ridiculously precise down to a 10th of a degree. So anyways, right now I see that I'm mounting this on the flat portion of the final scope level. I see that it is indeed level, and of course, our uh, LRA send it level is indicating level as well. I'm gonna take this off. There's a flat portion, a, a kind of a, there's Picatinny rail on the top of this, and then there's a portion that kind of skips. I'm gonna put it on top of that. All right, it's level there. Then of course, on the Picatinny rail itself, it's level there. So now we know this entire thing is level and it's good to go, just like you would your own gun or your own rail. So I'm gonna put our block mount on here the zero compromise block mount, and I'm not gonna tighten it down at first. So we're still indicating level. Now when I put this on here and I haven't tightened this down, that indicates level. I can put it in the middle of the mount itself in a flat spot where, where this portion is gonna go. That indicates level, and then this indicates level. So we should be good to go, right? But here's the problem, and I'm sure it's the same exact problem I was experienced when I've tried to use this in the past. So right now, we know all of that's level. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. All right, so now that I've tightened those down now, again, we still have an LRA send it level indicating level. Let's look over here. This still indicates level, but look at this folks. That is way off. That is way off. So what's happening is we have a mount that is level up here. We have the scope base that's level, but the interface 
those, those basically the bottom of this rail and where those clamps are clamping on, it is not allowing the mount to remain parallel with the scope base itself. So obviously, when I get up here, if I'm taking the measurement and I'm comparing it to this, which is on my scope base, and then I use this little guy over here. All right, so now I get that and it, it looks perfectly straight underneath there. I don't, I'm not seeing any gap. So that should be level, but look at this when we put this up here. This is way off. So that ends up being the problem with these. Um, you, there's just something you need to be aware of. I didn't know why that was in the past. All I said was that, you know, these don't work. So it's not that these don't work, it's we have a problem, and it's probably very common, where again, the interface of those clamps and the bottom of your scope base, they're not allowing them to grip properly to where they're, they're, it's gonna end up moving it a little bit left and right. So, you know, it's something to be aware of. All right, so now the question is, well, Gary, do I level the optic to the scope base or do I level the optic to the mount? And the answer is, it depends. Depends on this. If your scope base is 20 MOA and your mount is zero MOA, level that optic to the scope base itself. If your scope base is zero MOA and you got 20 MOA built into the mount, you wanna level the optic to the mount. Uh, and I cover that in this video right here so you can go check out why that's important. But basically, if we have some sort of mechanical elevation built in, we need to level to that. Because if we don't level to that mechanical elevation, if we're canting this, this optic in any direction off center or off plumb with that mechanical elevation, you're now turning windage into elevation and vice versa. So you need to be aware of that. So anyways, go check out the video. I illustrate that in detail. Now, I will tell you this. You'll notice that I have these marked now, one and two, because I came across this issue. I'm like, man, that's, that's nuts. I wonder if it happens over here. So I moved this mount over onto this one, and I was able to get everything perfectly level with one another everything's parallel so but but i bet that's very common uh, you know it's uh, it's pretty you know picatinny rails themselves it's easy to get this flat it's easy to get this flat but we have these angled portions underneath the rail that your scope clamps that your mount clamps are clamping to and the mount clamps are angle angled too and if if what we're dealing with too is if you know these screw holes are slightly off up or down if there's any tolerance in there it's easy to get that entire thing out of parallel or at least the mount out of parallel with the rail. All right, so the other problem that that creates is if you have a level on your mount, now that level is not gonna be correct. So now that we know that, if you're leveling to your scope base, you might wanna have a scope base mounted level. If you're leveling because you have MOA built into your mount, if you're leveling to that, you might wanna have your level on that or your anti-cant device on the mount itself so that we're keeping everything, so it just all makes sense, right? Now, with that being said, what is nice, let's say that we had 20 MOA built, because you can get these block mounts and many other mounts in with built-in elevation. What you can do is, especially with the LRA, is you can actually program this or calibrate this to where this, it is not leveling off of this, and you're basically getting the same level reading as your mount itself. So that's another great thing about one of the electronic levels. Not only are they really good, really sensitive, really bright, especially if you have eyesight issues. Uh, and again, I'll link that below, but you can go check out that video that I posted earlier, or you can just go to our uh, YouTube channel on there or our Rumble channel. I have the full review on this. It's definitely worth picking up and it helps a lot of people. It stays right there in your peripheral. And especially if you have, you're not as young as you used to be and you have some eyesight issues. But anyways, so if you're running into that issue, this doesn't work. But the point here is folks, anytime that you're mounting an optic, you got to do some verification. Don't trust the device or methodology ever. You got to do verification. You know, at the end of the day, when we're mounting the scope, the three things that we have to verify is that the scope is plumb with the gun, that the reticle is plumb inside the optic, and that the optic is tracking properly. And the only way that you can test all three of those and ensure all three of those or confirm all three of those is making sure that you're doing a tall target test after you mount the optic. If you're not doing that, then you don't know, and you're just you know, operating on faith and hope. And that's not how we should operate with long range. We need to make sure that we verify and get rid of all variables before we go out there and collecting data at distance so that we get rid of all the problems and we don't discover them much later or confuse them with other issues. And again, I cover that in that scope mounting miss video. 
uh, I go into detail with that. But anyways, I wanted to share that with you. I know it was good knowledge for me. I figured I'd share it with you because if your mount is not interfacing properly with your scope base, this is not going to work for you. None of them are. Um, so I thought that it's good information to have. Uh, I'm sure I left some things out, so make sure you leave any comments. Make sure you like, subscribe. If you like content like this, if you want to see other content like this, make sure you hit that bell notification. And make sure you're following us on other social media sites as well. And every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we have our Dangerous Liberty, a live podcast on Rumble, YouTube, and Facebook. So make sure you're joining us live. We talk about guns, gear, politics. We have special guests on all the time. And you get to participate, right? You get to ask questions, comment. We read those comments, and it's a lot of fun. So live wednesday at 7 p.m eastern time and while guns and gear is great what we're really about is training so make sure you go to paramounttactical.com go check out our upcoming training schedule we'd love to have you out we'd love to meet you in person we have long range courses tactical carbine handgun medical courses and driving courses so come visit us and for all your gear needs make sure you go to paramounttactical.com we only carry gear that we've personally tested and we believe in and we stake our reputation on it so anyways until next time stay armed stay ready we'll talk to you soon